Hi, so this is our second video about the humanistic psychologists, and we're going to talk about Maslow. Um, and some of you, I bet, are familiar with this pyramid that Maslow gives us. Um, and so Maslow talks about self-actualization um, and, and defines it mostly in the same ways that Rogers does. Um, it's about achieving one's full potential. But he gets very focused on the fact that it's very uh, difficult, in fact, he would say impossible to reach self-actualization, to achieve self-actualization until other more basic needs are met. Um, and I think that this is a really interesting moment in time to think about this because um, many of us, as we move through our typical lives, have no problem meeting our basic needs. And so those basic needs, as you can see on the pyramid, are um, the physiological needs, just being, you know, kind of food, um, wa you know, water, um, those physiological needs that, you know, in, that most, um, you know, many of us, um, not true for everyone, but for many of us, we're not typically worried about food and our safety needs, um, if, things, if life is going well, are also um, hopefully met most of the time. But right now we have large portions of, you know, of large groups of people and, and all of us to some degree um, who um, have not met or, are, or have those needs threatened. Um, and as long as those needs are threatened, it's going to be really hard to worry about the needs that come above them. Um, and I bet that some of you can reflect on this. We can talk about this uh, together um, when we're online together. Um, but you know, that if you want to understand why people are hoarding food, if you want to understand why people are hoarding toilet paper, um, if you want to understand why everyone seems so brittle right now, um, that, that Maslow would have a lot to say about that in terms of the threat to our basic needs. So, um, so we can talk about that more. Um, but if you think about that threat to the basic needs, if you're worried, you know, about, um, about just these you know, safety needs and, and, and food, et cetera, needs, um, then you may not be paying lots of attention to friends, uh, right? You may not be uh, very good um, as a romantic partner right now. Um, if those belongingness and love needs may not be as important. Or it may be that enough of those basic needs are being met that um, you are paying more attention to your psychological needs. Um, and, you know, but that if the belongingness needs, like you're not seeing your friends, maybe you're feeling isolated from the people that are important to you, maybe people who are important to you um, are sick or you're worried they will get sick, right? Then those esteem needs are not going to be the ones you're focusing on. We're always focusing on the, um, the lowest need that is going unmet or that is threatened. Um, and right, and so, so I, you know, I've gotten lots of emails from students apologizing to me for handing in late work or not being attentive to class. Um, and if you want to know, you know, in a real way why um, I'm not penalizing for late work and why I got rid of a whole bunch of work that felt to me not central to our learning goals for this semester, um, it's the fact that esteem needs, those feeling of accomplishment, right, and prestige, which is where your academic work comes in. That you work hard normally at academics because um, you want, you know, you want to meet that psychological need of esteem, uh, prestige, and feeling accomplished. Um, that I know that there's going to be a whole bunch of you for whom those other lower needs, belongingness, love, safety, and physiological needs, um, are just going to be where your mind is right now, um, and it is, uh, it is just unrealistic to think that I'm going to have all of you who are going to have all those tied down and therefore can worry about what grade you're getting in the class or whether you're on any given day, whether um, you know your schoolwork gets your focus. Um, and then the self-actualization, right, achieving one's full potential, including creative activities. Um, most of us right now are not being very future-oriented. Most of us right now are not um, thinking about, we might be worried about the future, but we're not, you know, we're not behaving today in a way that deliberately pushes us forward in our life, that most of us are happy to just get through the day, getting done the things we need to get done today, and that we're not in a building phase right now, which is what self-actualization is about. Um, so if we think about for Maslow what self-actualization is, um, you can look at these, and I like, I deliberately set up the slide this way because these, it, it's simply a group. So it's not that they're an ordered list, um, it's that these are just um, things that self-actualized -actualiz people show, and we can talk about them to make sure. So I think some of them are really obvious. So right, good perceptions are real, fake, and other people. Um, some of you might be really good at this. You might be, I know I, I, I am sometimes just um, 
perplexed by people I know who um, are watching the same person I'm watching and not and and, and not you know, their bullshit meter isn't going off. Um, and so, you know, the ability to um, detect fakeness in people um, is something self-actualized people are better at than others. Um, you know, enjoyment of some privacy and solitude um, it doesn't mean you have to always want to be alone or even that you prefer to be alone, but that sometimes it feels good to be alone or at the very least you can be comfortable being alone. Um, the acceptance of self and others, including our animal nature. Um, this is about um, feeling like it's okay to enjoy sex, that it's okay to enjoy food, um, to have a full acceptance of kind of the full range of um, what human beings are in terms of the things that bring us joy. Um, autonomous behavior is about being able to behave and make decisions independently um, without um, overly relying on other people. It doesn't mean you can't ever include other people's opinions, but that you can do this. Um, not about even whether you always do, but whether you can and can do it comfortably. Um, Self-actualized people show spontaneity, and so they can um, change course. Um, and this uh, sounds very much like that creative flexibility we talked about earlier. Um, they have, this is my favorite, they have a sense of awe and wonder. And so self-actualized people are more likely to, you know, kind of take moments to just allow themselves to take in the beauty of the world, to, um, you know, to um, spend time just looking at stars and thinking about the universe or to um, watch the clouds or go for a hike in the forest and pay attention to how beautiful the moss is, um, things like that. Um, so a sense of awe and wonder, you know, and, and, and even in almost a childlike way, not a childish, but the willingness to just kind of really pay attention to small things or amazing things. Um, people who are self-actualized are task focused, um, meaning that they can stay focused on the thing that they're doing uh, and don't get too easily distracted. Uh, that They want to finish the task. They're invested in finishing the task in front of them. Um, and then the last one um, on, on our group here is the capacity for mystical experience. And this can take many different forms, but again, this has to do in part with openness. So this is somebody who is also willing to, willing to consider the spiritual world, whatever uh, aspect or, or however defined that is for them. Um, so this is, again, an interesting list of both ways of um, assessing whether somebody is self-actualized, but also, again, in terms of goals, thinking about um, that part of being self-actualized is wanting to move towards these um, as goals for the future. Um, so we'll talk more about Rogers and Maslow when we're together, um, and hopefully uh, this is giving you some food for thought.